Welcome, everyone. Uh, this evening, we are pleased to present our uh, Citizens Utility Board uh, presentation. We, uh, we, the village, uh, our Sustainability Commission, as well as our Utility Commission, has uh, decided to offer a, a presentation for uh, you in the audience, as well as um, this presentation is being filmed so that we can, from you know, presenting this way, uh, so that we can also show this on our um, Hoffman Estates cable TV, uh, so we can reach an audience at home. We are planning to post this on our village website and share with uh, social media so that more people can get informed about um, their utility bills and hopefully um, Ms. Sarah Moskowitz is presenting today from Citizens Utility Board, or CUB, um, and they are a um, not-for-profit, uh, nonpartisan agency that is an advocate for consumer rights and uh, focusing on utility billing and um, energy kind of specialists. And uh, I would like to invite her to take the take the stand here and uh, she can share a lot of good information with you this evening. Um, hopefully you'll learn some things and we'll provide information for you if you need to get in contact with um, either the village or with, uh, with Cub. Okay. So thank you so much. Uh, my name is Sarah Moskowitz and I am the Outreach Director at the Citizens Utility Board, otherwise known as CUB. And before I dive in, I always like to get a sense of how many of you guys are familiar with CUB, with the organization. Excellent. Okay, a whole lot of you. Any CUB members in the audience? Excellent. Thank you for your support. Um, for those of you who might not know as much about us, um, I have to, I'll give you the little spiel. CUB is a nonprofit consumer advocacy organization that was created in the early 80s to represent the in interests of utility rate payers. We cover the entire state of Illinois. Our office is in downtown Chicago. We employ about 30 people. Um, but like I said, we cover the whole state. So I spend a lot of my time traveling around. I have uh, a team of eight people plus myself who go around the state and do events like this, um, presenting to people about how not to get ripped off and um, what the latest policy issues are in Springfield uh, relating to utilities. Oh, we also have a department, um, our communications guys, they update our website, they put together all of our fact sheets, and I brought with me uh, some samples of the kind of publications we put out. This is a pretty hefty packet, but this is really me controlling myself because we have dozens of fact sheets about every element of your utility bills, and you can access them on our website, which we update every day. We also do a lot of media. Um, we're going to be doing a media campaign about home phone bills next week, so stay tuned for that. Um, there's some, some activity afoot in Springfield that may have an impact on people who still have a home phone, but that's another issue. Um, we also have a lobbying and legislative and legal side, so we work in Springfield to try to get more consumer-friendly laws passed or to try to prevent attacks on consumer rights that uh, utility companies might be uh, trying to perpetrate there. We also work before the Illinois Commerce Commission, the ICC. That is the state regulatory body that oversees the state-regulated utilities. Um, and so just to clarify, what is a state regulated utility? Well, technically, that is your um, home phone, your local regular old landline home phone service, your electric. In this area, it's Commonwealth Edison supplies electric uh, delivery to us, and your natural gas, which around here is NICOR. Um, those are technically it for the state regulated utilities in most, um, for most municipalities. People always like to ask if we have anything to do with cable rates, and the answer is no. I am very, very sorry. CUB has nothing to do with cable rates. But that said, we do have contacts at the cable company who will usually talk to us. And that gets me to the final part of our organization that I really want you guys to remember. If you forget everything else that I tell you this evening, please try to remember this one thing. And that is we are here 
to help you. If you ever have any kind of question or complaint or issue with a utility and you haven't been able to get it resolved yourself by calling the utility, you are welcome to call us. In fact, we want you to call us. In our packet of materials here, I, um, our phone number is on all of this stuff. It's a toll-free number. We have real live people at our office answering the phone. And they are, thank you, and they're really nice. It was my first job at Cub was actually uh, manning our hotline. And so you call us up, you tell, so that led me back up. If you call the utility, right, unfortunately a lot of times it'll take you a while to get through to somebody. And then when you do get through to the person there, they might not have the knowledge or the authority to help you with your issue. So we'll tell you what your rights are at Cub. We'll tell you what your rights are under state law. We we'll, can troubleshoot what might be going on, because we've heard it all. We've heard it all. If we can go wrong with the utility company, we've heard it and we've experienced it, usually. Every once in a while, we're surprised. And then this is the important thing. We can get in touch with the higher office at the utility company on your behalf. And so that is the, 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 the real key thing. And we've helped thousands and thousands of people. We, we average about, I think, just under 10,000 consumer calls a year to our hotline and we do whatever we can to help people. And just to piggyback on that, we'll do our best to help you as an individual, but your calling us helps us also. It helps keep us relevant because we don't know what's going on out here unless we're hearing from people in the community about their experiences with the utilities. So, I mean, we're all, the 30 of us who work at Cub, we're all utility customers ourselves, but we're just a small number of us. So we really rely on you guys to keep us apprised of the situation. Then we know there's a whole bunch of people getting misled into signing contracts with other supply, energy supply countries, right? So maybe we have to take those companies to court. Maybe we have to do a media campaign to try to warn people about the scams that are out there. We wouldn't know to take those actions if we weren't hearing from folks about their experiences. So you can email us, go on our website, there's a way to submit utility complaints online, or you can call our hotline. During regular business hours, you'll get through to a receptionist, a real live human being, and you tell her what your issue is, and she'll transfer you to the correct person at the office to get your complaint straightened out. Um, so hopefully you'll never need it, but if you do, just keep our number in your back pocket just in case you have an issue that comes up. We are membership funded organizations, so we have about 100,000 members throughout the state depending on how you count, who donate to us. Um, and of course, we invite membership contributions. But that is not a requirement to be helped by us. So if you ever have to call CUB, we're not going to ask you first, well, when was the last time you donated? We work for everybody, OK? So now that I've got that out of the way. Um, between what I've been talking to people out in the field and what our uh, consumer rights counselors have been hearing in the office, I can say pretty confidently that the number one issue right now facing people um, when it comes to utilities in this state is all of the choices that have been springing up, especially on energy, on your gas and electric bills, and especially electric, because that's really exploded in the past couple of years. And even before we got started this evening, I had a couple of people approach me asking about um, some of the stuff that they're seeing on their bills. So I'm going to focus most of my remarks this evening on that stuff. But I am happy to take questions as we go. As you can probably tell, I am a very informal speaker. So I would really uh, raise your hand if you have questions about something. And I would like to, like to make sure that I get to everything that you're here to hear about. But I've, it sounds like you guys are interested in what's going on with, uh, with the choice in the energy markets for residential customers. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, sir, did you have a question to start out? The yes, the question was, if you couldn't hear him, was he's looking at um, what the ComEd price right now is and comparing that to the price that Hoffman Estates got for, um, for the, the, the village's residents. And there is a slight difference. The Hoffman Estates rate is higher right now 
than the ComEd rate. You can, if you want to opt out of that Hoffman Estates rate, you can opt out of it without an early termination fee. Um, I'm going to go into a little bit more detail about municipal aggregation in a second, um, but, but there is another hand springing up, so I'll answer your question too. So his question was about an exit fee with a particular um, with Constellation. So it depends on the, on the supplier. Whether the supplier charges a termination fee depends on the supplier, but it also depends on the plan you agreed to with them. So some of these suppliers, and I'm referring to in the packet of information that I gave out, I included our very popular fact sheet about electric choice. And this is where we list the different electric suppliers and what their going rates are right now. Many of these suppliers have more than one offering. And some of them have termination fees, some of them don't. The, the agreement that was signed by the Village of Hoffman Estates, there is no early termination fee. So first of all, I hope that most of you know that when you go with another supplier, it doesn't mean you're getting different electrons. It doesn't mean that ComEd isn't in charge of reading your meter or sending you bills anymore. Your gas and your electric bill basically consist of two different pieces. This is an oversimplification, but it can help you understand what's going on. So there's the part of your bill that's for delivery, and that's for the wires passing the electricity into your home. That's for the pipes pumping the gas into your home. That's for the meter. That's for all of that good stuff, for the meter reading, all of that good stuff. That's the delivery charges. Those delivery charges, those are always the utilities. Utilities always going to be in charge of that. Think about it. It's not like these other companies are running different wires to your house, right? It's always going to be the utility, the incumbent utility, delivering all of the juice or all of the gas into your house. But then there's the supply side of your bill. And that's for the actual electricity itself. That's for the actual gas itself. That's for the commodity that they are selling you, what the price of that actual stuff is. So you have a choice now for both gas and electric. You can either stay with NICOR or ComEd for both your supply and your delivery, or you can opt to go with another company for the supply. You can sign a contract with another company. And when I say sign a contract, that can be misleading because they have these voice verified contracts now. So you can be signing a contract over the phone if you're not careful. A lot of people are, are unpleasantly surprised to find out they've done that. Um, but you can, you can make an agreement with another supplier. So the utility is still delivering it to your house, but the actual price you're paying per kilowatt hour or per therm is set by this agreement that you've arrived at with this other entity, right? And in most of those cases, that other entity will just tack their charges onto the utility bill. So people think, oh, I switched. Like, why am I still getting a ComEd bill? Well, if you look at it carefully, there'll be another company listed there. So you can do that by yourself. You can just go out as an individual and switch to another company if you want. Um, or, more likely, you can, as an individual, be sitting around and you can start getting a whole bunch of phone calls, a whole bunch of pieces of mail, and possibly even a whole bunch of people coming to your front door trying to get you to switch. And then it's up to you to try to make a wise decision. So you can do that as an individual. Now, the law in Illinois allows a municipality to switch all of their residents over if their residents allow it. And so that's what happened here in Hoffman Estates. A lot of people ask, how come the town was allowed to do this? Not this hasn't happened here. Maybe someone will ask later. But I've been in some towns, um, a big one over there that starts with a capital C. That, one happened, that, that question's asked a lot. Um, how is the town allowed to do this? Well, it was on the ballot. So you might not remember, but um, in every town where the municipality has made an agreement with another company and has switched all of their residents over automatically, that was permitted by a referendum question on the ballot sometime in the past. And so it's usually something, do you want to allow the city to do this if they're able to find a, a good deal? And a huge number of towns all over Illinois did this. Uh, something like 400 towns all over Illinois 
did aggregate, they call it municipal aggregation, they aggregated the uh, need for electricity amongst all of their residents, and it was a pretty good concept, right? Because think of it, as we're going out on our, on our own as individuals, we'll think about the bargaining power of an entire town doing this on behalf of how many thousands of residents. So most municipalities, in fact, I think all municipalities, when this first started, were able to get really good rates and they were able to beat the ComEd rates. So this fact sheet here, this white fact sheet that lists all of the different suppliers, this does not list all of the different municipal agreements on it. This fact sheet applies to if you as an individual go out and decide to shop around for a different electric supplier. That's why you'll see my beautiful handwriting on a couple pages here, because I wanted to make sure to list what the Hoffman Estates price was here. So Hoffman Estates is with Constellation. That's why I put that little star here, because the Hoffman Estates rate is different from the rates that people could get with Constellation just on their own, okay? So a couple of notes. Thank you for, for clarifying that, Ashley. Um, so if you couldn't hear her, if you leave the contract with that with Constellation that you were switched over to through um, living in Hoffman Estates, you can do so and you won't be assessed any kind of fee, but you can't come back. You can't get back onto the municipal aggregation rate, okay? Now that aggregation rate with Hoffman Estates is locked in at 7.93 cents per kilowatt hour until July of 2015. So for another seven, another six plus months, it's the Hoffman Estates rate is going to be guaranteed at 7.93 cents per kilowatt hour. Um, ComEd's rate, um, ComEd's supply rate is fixed until June. Um, and the ComEd supply rate is fixed at 7.43 cents per kilowatt hour until June. It is marginally lower than the current Hoffman Estates rate. And it can go even a little bit lower and a little bit higher because there is a fee that ComEd adds on to the per kilowatt hour rate. It's called the Purchased Electricity Adjustment. And that can add or subtract up to half a cent per kilowatt hour um, to the ComEd rate. So the ComEd rate could go up to as much as um, what the Hoffman Estates rate is, or it could be even lower, lower, because it, the purchased electricity adjustment could be negative. All in all, I, I, I don't want to, I don't want anyone to freak out over these fractions of a cent because we're not talking about, depending on the size of your house and the overall usage that you see, we're not talking about millions and millions of dollars. The bigger problems that we see are with some of these other entities, some of these other suppliers that are getting individuals to sign up with them, who sign them up for a variable rate, which we see being 200 or 300 times as high as a percent as high as the regular ComEd rate. So a lot of these companies, right, so so let me back up. A lot of these companies, right, the, the variable rates, or the variable rate starts after a couple of months, so they sell you a really low rate, but they're not totally forthcoming at first about what that rate's going to become after the introductory period is over. Many of them sweeten the deal with gift cards, with rebates, with airline miles. I've seen a lot of airline mile ones. Um, and and listen, like it's up to you if you want to go for the airline miles or if you want to sign up for something and get that $50 card and then just get out of it before your rate goes variable. But you have to be vigilant. The, a lot of times these companies are just counting on the fact that, that inertia happens. People think they're going to be paying attention, but then life gets busy, life happens, and, and it falls by the wayside, and then they don't notice again until finally one day, months later, they'll look at their bill and they're paying twice as much as if they were just with the ComEd rate. So, and and this, is, this is changing, right? So I want to back up even more and just say that it's not like all of these other choices are an automatic ripoff. In fact, the choices... Um, historically, f for on the electric side, had been pretty good. Now, years ago, we got choice in the natural gas market. 
And that's a whole other can of worms. Choice in natural gas has been available to residential customers in Illinois for many years. And Cub is very wary of those companies because it's almost like from day one, these companies, many of them, were resorting to fraudulent tactics to try to get people to sign up. And over 90% of the plans offered by these alternative gas suppliers have cost consumers more oftentimes a lot more than if people just stay with NICOR. In the electric market, it's been a little different, especially when it first opened up, Electric Choice first opened up to residential customers a few years ago. At that time, ComEd was stuck in some high-priced contracts for our electricity supply. Those contracts had been set in, I think, 2007, right before the economy tanked. So when they set those contracts, it was a pretty good rate. And that's a whole other story I won't get into. It was a very good rate at that time when those contracts were set through com for ComEd's customers. But then what happened in 2008? The economy tanked. Overall de manufacturing and overall demand for electricity plummeted. So ComEd was, was still held to these contracts at this price, say, for electricity. But the actual market rate for electricity was down here. So you had room for these other companies to come in and actually undercut the ComEd rate. And so it was really nice for a couple of years there, we weren't hearing so much about fraud. We weren't getting phone calls at Cub from people crying because they'd been lied to into signing a contract that ended up costing them thousands of dollars. These other companies were really legitimately able to beat the ComEd price. Since then, however, those contracts that ComEd was stuck in that were a little bit inflated have expired. And so the ComEd price is now, for the supply, is now much more competitive with what these other companies can offer us. And so that now that that's happened, we're seeing these companies that are already in the market starting to resort to some of the more misleading marketing. I had one of them call me on my cell phone a few weeks ago, and that poor guy called the wrong person on her cell phone. I won't recount the whole conversation, but it was, I can't even imagine, if I didn't know anything about this, it would have sounded great. I'm going to offer you a discount off your ComEd bill. Sure. I had to really keep picking at him to get him to admit that that rate that he was quoting me was only going to be for three months, you know, to admit that um, I wouldn't be able to get financial assistance um, from the state if I were income eligible if I switched to this other company. All this other stuff he was not forthcoming about. I had to really know what kinds of questions to ask. And so that's the main thing. Be careful. Be careful. In this, in this fact sheet here, we have a checklist of things you need to watch out for. I think you want to you wanna know what the price is going to be, whether that price is going to be fixed, whether there are going to be any additional fees, either per month or if you want to exit the contract, is there a fee? If there, the company charges anything else like a deposit? If the company renews your contract automatically after the first term? A lot of people are surprised by that. You got to know what questions to ask. And I honestly don't think anybody should be agreeing to anything over the phone without seeing something in writing. And it's really hard. When these guys call you on the phone, it's very difficult to get them to mail you something. And I wonder why. So right now, the Hoffman Estates deal is that 7 point, what is it, 93 cents per kilowatt hour until July. Now, if you opt out, you apparently won't be able to get back into that rate for the duration, for according to what Ashley told us. It's not a foregone conclusion that the village is going to continue with this aggregation. They're going to have to see what the market looks like this summer and make a decision as to whether they want to prolong their agreement with Constellation, go with somebody else, or just say, it was nice while it lasted, we'll just send everybody who's still with us back over to ComEd. That's going to be something that's up to the village. And if you have strong feelings about it, you should call the village and tell them what you think they should be doing. You know, so. Yeah, she like this for natural gas. Ah, the question is, do we have a sheet like this for natural gas? Yes, I didn't bring it. 
So you can either go on our website, and it's very much the same, or if you want, you can always call us. We'll print it out and just mail it to you, too. Yes, we do have this same comparison dealy with, with natural gas. Yep. If you couldn't hear him, he was like, how do these guys operate? How do they make their money if, we're, if it's all the same gas? And it's all paper. It's in the realm of, of finance, finances. And so you're right. It's just the deals that they make, the length of the deals, the hedges that they do, and their business models. Now, some of these companies are gigantic. Constellation is a huge, huge company. Direct Energy is a huge company. Some of these other guys might just be resellers of those guys or something and are re relying more on multi-level marketing plans where people have to pay them a little bit to become salespeople. You know, so you're right. It, they all just have their different kind of culture and their different angle for getting people to sign up with them. Some of them, it's a much more legitimate kind of just hedging, deciding that you're willing to lock in at a certain price with them for a couple of years, and you think they are going to do a pretty good job of ensuring that you'll at least have the same rate, whereas the ComEd rate changes every six months, and so you're just trusting these other guys. But you're right. It's in the realm of paper. A lot of people, a lot of these alternative suppliers, as an example, market themselves as green. And so I've, I've met people in, in the field who say, yes, well, I switched to one of these other companies, and now the power coming to my house is, is renewable power. Like, well, it's not like the electrons coming to your house are green, you know. They're the same ones. It's the exact same mix of electricity sources as your neighbor who's still with ComEd. What happens when you sign a contract with another supplier for green energy is that that company turns around and purchase, purchases renewable energy certificates on your behalf. They take some of the money that you pay them and they go and um, invest in the, the construction of renewable generation somewhere. And depending on the company, that somewhere could be in Illinois or that somewhere could be anywhere in the country. So if it's important to you to be green, um, you can definitely sign up with one of these other uh, green plans. And you'll see many of these companies offer multiple different plan choices. Some of them offer a green choice where you're basically paying a premium for the knowledge that your payments to them is helping to support renewable generation somewhere. Now, Cub's argument is this is all well and good. We're more excited about things like energy efficiency and um, demand response, which is very jargony. And I, I, I would like to get, get into that um, because I don't ever want to talk to people about choice in the electric market without talking about um, pricing plans that reward people for using electricity at off-peak times because this is the kind of thing that's going to become a lot more important as we move, thank you, as we move into the future and we become more dependent on all of our gadgetry and whatnot because everything I've been talking to up to this point is just you're paying for electricity and your rate is always the same regardless of whether you're using it at noon or at midnight, or at 6 a.m., or at 6 p.m., all of these, you're just a, paying a regular flat average rate for your electricity. And my contention is that this way of paying for electricity, which is how we've been paying for decades and decades, right? This way of paying for electricity divorces us from the way that electricity really works. And so I'm glad I have a chance to get to this because I like to draw. So let me, let, me, let me try and illustrate this a little bit here with a beautiful drawing that I'll do here. So here's my, here's my chart. The, okay, let me try to remember here. The y-axis here is um, price, okay? That's a cents sign. And the x-axis is time. So this is midnight, and this is midnight. Ooh, this is kind of rickety. So here is a regular price that we pay for electricity. Same all throughout the day. The actual price of electricity most days in the year Say this is 7.4 cents, right? Something like that. The actual price for most days of the year, the actual price of, of electricity is down here. 
So why is the price that we're paying so high? When we pay ComEd or one of these other companies for our electricity on our regular standard average rate, we're not just paying for the electricity that we're using. We're paying for the electricity that we could be using. So let me, I, it's, it's a difficult concept to explain if people haven't been introduced to it before. It took me a while to wrap my head around this, but there are a lot of power plants in Illinois that only run during a few really, really hot days in the summer. And for the rest of those years, those power plants just sit pretty much idle. And we pay. And we pay. So we are paying an inflated rate year round for electricity to make sure we're covered during those few really, really hot hours in the summer when we all run home all at once and turn on all our air conditioning and run our dishwashers and all that stuff, right? So here's a picture of a really hot, like a typical really hot summer day. Here, I'll use, I'll use red, because it's hot. So hot summer day. Do, 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 here, do, 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 low, low, low. Then we get to about 4 p.m., doop. Up, 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 then about 6 p.m., doop, back down, and then low. So this right here is expensive. We've got these peaker plants that kick in, and listen, when we want a power plant that's going to turn on exactly what, when we want to turn it on, what kind of power plant do you think it's going to be? Is it going to be a wind farm? Is it going to be a solar field? No. This, this power plant that's covering these peak times is going to burn things. It's going to burn coal, or it's going to burn natural gas. Who wants to build more of these, right? To, do, you want to, to want, do you want to build? It's expensive. It's, it can be dirty. And if it's a natural gas plant, it can actually drive up our heating bills in the winter because it's using natural gas. So this, having a peak, having these peaks in our overall, all of us aggregated together, having these peaks in how much electricity that we're using is expensive. It contributes to pollution. It contributes to um, problems with our electric service. So this is when we're subject to blackouts and brownouts, when we're putting all of this strain on the electric grid. And so now you have a choice and you're going to be getting more and more choices, especially as the utility starts implementing more grid upgrades, which is a whole other can of worms. I'll come back out and talk about that one day. Um, now you have a choice to get on a different rate with Commonwealth Edison. Instead of just this average rate, you can get on this rate. Now, it's not for everybody, because when you get on this rate, they call it real-time pricing. When you get on this rate, you are putting yourself at a little bit of risk for when this happens. One day, it was maybe last summer, I was at work. I was in the office. It was 4 in the evening, and I'm, or in the afternoon. I'm kind of a nerd about this, and I noticed that it was 96 degrees out. Like, uh-oh, 96 degrees, 4 p.m. Let's look and see what the real-time price is. And I looked, and it was 19 cents a kilowatt hour, okay? So it was much, much higher than what this average price was. But that was four. I wasn't home. My air conditioning wasn't on. So when I got home, I got home about six. I looked again, and the price was back down to about 3.3 .3 cents a kilowatt hour. So it's not for everybody. And over my dead body and over Cub's dead body, over the AARP's dead body, over the Attorney General's office dead body, and over a lot of people's dead body, would the utilities ever force everybody on to a rate like this, okay? We don't think everybody should be forced to incur this kind of risk. But for a lot of people, it really makes a lot of sense, especially if you aren't blasting your air conditioner at home during this time. So you can sign up for it right now with ComEd. It's called real-time pricing. And I always like to introduce this concept because even if you don't want to sign up for it now, think about it. It's an interesting thing. It's an interesting thing. It's, become, it's going to become a lot more important. We're going to see a lot more of that because this isn't sustainable. 
the way things are going, unless we start rewarding people for not doing this as a whole, we're going to have to start building a lot more power plants that burn things. Um, you had a question in the back there. So first of all, the, the first question you had is um, just the smart meters. These new meters that ComEd is installing, does that have anything to do with this stuff? And the answer is yes. The smart meters are able to measure your electricity usage so that it knows when the electricity is being used so you can be charged the hourly rate instead of them just reading it once a month and they don't know what, what your load graph looks like, right? So the meters make it much easier for people to participate in programs like this. If you don't have a meter yet, they will come out and just install an incremental meter that will be able to measure this stuff. So if you're not, if you, I live in an area where we're not scheduled to get them for a few years, so I can get on this um, now. But the meters will make this kind of program available. The meters also, they're, they're, they're in between programs. So these are two extremes, right? There's the average price and then there's the completely you know, fluctuating price for electricity, although we're able to make pretty reasonable assumptions about it. We don't know exactly what it's going to be. But some of the other companies out there are offering to people who already have these meters a predictable price. There's two different, there's an off-peak price and an on-peak price. And if you have one of the smart meters, you can get on that. So you always know that if you're using your electricity before 7 p.m., it's 7.4 cents a kilowatt hour for using it after 7 p.m. It's 4.4. You know that every weekday. So for um, let me think for a second. So for for these for that kind of plan, you know it looks like this, but it's the same every day. So the meters will give rise to those kind of pricing products. Now the the second question you had, I do wanna I do wanna um, mention that was. Can, can the utility then throttle your usage if you're using too much? Only if you let them. Okay, ComEd is still in the business of selling electricity. So it's not like they want to prevent us from using electricity. Now, they do offer these kinds of plans, and they do offer efficiency programs. They have rebates available if you make uh, upgrades to your home uh, that, that will allow you to use less electricity. But they're doing that because they have to. The state requires them to offer these kinds of plans. It requires them to offer efficiency programs. At the end of the day, ComEd wants you to use their product because that's how they get paid. So they're not throttling anybody. They do have some programs where they, um, if, you allow, if you have central air conditioning, they'll pay you if you allow them to put a little device on your central air conditioner compressor and it'll cycle off the compressor at these peak times and they'll pay you 10 bucks a month in the summer if you let them do that. So that can be seen as a form of throttling, but across the country where we're not seeing that happen, it's not like a cable company where you're using so much and they're just trying to, to jip you. They want you to use the electricity. So, so the question was, can, if you install um, solar panels on your house or any kind of generator, renewable generator, um, can you sell your excess electricity back to the utility? And the answer is yes, you can. Cub's position is we definitely like that. We want the utilities to make it easy for people to do that kind of thing. It only makes sense. Um, yeah, there is a fee to opt out because that's to recoup the cost of sending around the truck to read your meter. Because basically, it, it, ultimately, it can be, if it works right, we're monitoring it, it could end up being a cost savings because right now they have to send a guy out, they have to send a truck out, they have to fuel the truck, they have to insure the truck to go out. And so part of the meter, the new metering system is, is going to do away with estimated bills if it works. And um, it's also going to allow that kind of stuff to happen automatically without the expense of sending them someone around. So the idea is if somebody opts out of having the meter, well, then they're still going to have to send the person out to read it manually, and that is going to cost money. So I was actually pleasantly surprised. It's about $22 a month to opt out. Some parts of the country, it's been twice as high. 
to opt out of having the meters installed. So all of this is still a work in progress, right? Um, CUB is officially in favor of upgrading our infrastructure. Okay, and that's something that people have criticized us. I've been at CUB for 14 years, and I've had people yell at me, say, CUB, you're never for rate hikes, but how are they going to ever upgrade the grid? I agree. I think the grid needed upgrading, especially the strain we're putting it under. The technology that we're relying on right now is the same technology that Thomas Edison was familiar with, okay? I didn't know that. I used to think they had sensors everywhere. I didn't think that I had to call the utility when I had a power outage. I just figured they knew. They don't, because their grid is just sitting there. They're throwing electricity onto these old wires, and that, you know, it's more high tech than that, but it's actually quite amazing how well it works, given how antiquated parts of it, parts of it are. So we're in favor of these upgrades. Now, the way the costs are being recouped is another issue, and this is not that kind of an event, but this is something that we were fighting very hard in Springfield. Um, that's a whole other issue. It came up again during this veto session, but that's not that kind of event. So, but, we, but it's a work in progress, and they're still working on it, it's still being done, and so we're keeping a very close eye on it. I got a call from a woman the other day who the first guy to come out to change her meter said, I can't change your meter. There's a situation here. It's unsafe. You're going to have to get the siding redone on your house. And she's like, what? <laughs> it's going to cost thousands of dollars. So we called our contact at ComEd. They sent a guy out, and he was like, I don't know what that guy was on. And they did it right there, and she didn't have to do, she had to do no such thing. So that's why, again, call us. If you have an experience like that, let us know. We can make, if, if a stink needs to be made, we will be happy to do it. Yeah, so, so the question, right, right, the question is, you know, so now in some areas where there's a very common um, photovoltaic, a lot of solar panels going on, the utilities are starting to push back because it's becoming expensive for them to um, process this and reimburse people, and it also might be creating different kinds of pressures on the system. Um, and so again, this is all work in progress. This is all, that, that's the thing. When I first started a CUB 14 years ago, I was like, okay, cool, we'll work for hard for a few years and then we'll succeed and we can go out of business, right? Well, no, it's just, it's always changing and there's a lot going on. So yes, everywhere you look, there's a whole other can of worms, right? So at some point, if enough people start installing solar panels, they're going to take, the, the utilities are probably going to take notice, and they might start to realize that this, um, this is putting a strain on their bottom line, doing this for this many people. It also can, and it, it is, the idea of balance on the system is real also. Um, what I said here, this applies also for, for when you have a, a big influx of renewable power thrown on the grid, that can create problems too. The electric grid always has to be in balance. There has to be enough electricity to supply our needs, but there can't be too much either. Too much creates a problem as well. Um, I, again, nerd, I looked um, late one night, it was a, it was a cool J June evening, about 11 p.m., I looked at the real-time price of electricity. It was a couple of years ago, and it was negative 1.1 cents per kilowatt hour. So if I had had real-time pricing and I was using electricity at that time, I would have been paid to be using my electricity because there was too much power on the grid, and I think it's probably because there was an influx of wind being thrown onto the grid at that time. So that can create issues as well. Like if there's a giant influx of a renewable on there, they need to make sure that that's not straining the grid itself too. There's gonna to be a whole market of, of uh, companies that will offer management software or plug-in devices that will help you automate this so you don't have to spend all of your time monitoring the prices and stuff, but yes. Um, so it is, it is nice to have all of these options and all of these cool things you can do, but again, we don't want it to be overwhelming for Joe consumer like me, honestly, who works a lot and doesn't have time to deal with this stuff. Actually, I spend my whole life working on utility stuff. I get home, my husband wants to talk to me about that stuff. I'm like, please, <laughs> please, can we talk about something else? So 
I would like to just know that I can be on a regular rate and not have to worry about this stuff if I so choose. I don't have to really, really get nuts with it, but I can if I want. Even if it turns out you've overpaid the utility because they've been overestimating your bills for a bunch of months or something, you know, how easy is it to get a check cut for that? Um, not very easy, although we, we can do it. We can do it. We've filed complaints and gotten it for people, but the first thing they want to do is put it on your bill as a credit. Yes, the question is, can I as a consumer look up what the real-time price is? Yes, the, the ComEd's website. Um, if you just Google ComEd real-time pricing, it'll take you to a whole dedicated website about it, and you can see the current price, you can see what they predicted it was going to be, you can see historic prices, you can see averages for the month, for the week. Um, and I wanna, know, I wanna mention one other thing. ComEd did something really smart when they, um, when they set up this real-time pricing program, they don't run it. ComEd does not run their real-time pricing program. They hired a really cool nonprofit organization to run their real-time pricing program. So if you call, I think they're only open during business hours, if you call during business hours to the special real-time pricing phone number, you're not actually talking to ComEd, you're talking to somebody who works at a company or a uh, nonprofit called Elevate Energy, and they're really nice, they're really smart, and I call them all the time myself when I have questions about the program. So, and I think they run that website too, so it is very clear and it's front and center what the price is. The plan is for all homes to have them installed by 2021. Yes, you will receive notification. You're going to get two pieces of mail in advance. And when they, I think you get a robocall also if they have a valid phone number on you, I think. And the guy will also knock on your door when, uh, when they show up to actually change out the meter. Yes. They may. They may. They'll probably put um, ComEd in areas where they're doing this. They've been hosting community meetings, so a lot of villages have been co-hosting those. I've been to a bunch of those in the suburban areas. Um, the village might pop something up on their website, but you can ask them to do that, too. I don't think they're obligated to, but most of them are, notifying them that there's guys who really do work for ComEd going around, because <laughs> sometimes you don't know. So I actually, one of my coworkers just got her new meter, and uh, her power didn't even go out. She was at home when they did it, and they they did a little jumper, and it took five minutes. She said, "So." Absolutely, absolutely. You don't have to do a thing. Most people who have the new meters don't even know it. I can guarantee you that. Yeah. The question was, if I want to install solar panels, how long would it take to break even? I can't answer that question. A long time. I think um, photovoltaic systems are not cheap. Um, I think it would, depending on your how big the system is and how much electricity you use on average, there's a lot of variables. Um, but it's not cheap. It would, it would be many years. Yeah, <laughs> decades probably for for your uh, for it to pay for itself. One of the things that we're working our policy guy and I am not an expert on this because this is still being worked on. But one of the things that our policy guys are working on is um, kind of a community solar program. So making it easier for um, people to buy in to solar collectively um, in different ways of getting reimbursed for that kind of program. Because yeah, it for the typical homeowner, it's not really feasible to go ahead and just do it yourself on your own. But there's this idea that people can band together and either um, kind of buy into a local solar field or um, kind of um, collect everyone pay into some solar panels and get recouped some of that kind of collectively. And so, but for that to really take off, um, you have to have provisions that where people can get credited on their bills for that. And so it takes some negotiating to figure out how all of the nuts and bolts will work. The question was, can ComEd tell us our electrical utiliz utilization per hour? You mean us, like me, like in my house? Not unless you have the new meter. Uh, not unless you have the new meter. So until you get the new meter, there's no way of knowing. But once you get the new meter, even if you haven't signed up for any kind of weird pricing program or something, once you have the new meter, you can create a, an online account and you can log in and you can see it. And that'll be nice because then you can look at your historical usage patterns and then you'll know whether one of these kind of special pricing plans would benefit you. 
And so that'll be nice. We'll have baseline data so we can make a really wise decision um, to figure out if we, we would benefit. So the question was, yeah, the question was, I've been getting these pieces of mail telling me how well I'm doing compared to my neighbors. So first of all, that piece of mail, it's not hourly. So they don't know hourly. They just know your monthly comparison, right? So they don't know how well you're doing with your load shape. They know how well you're doing just month to month. But generally, we get so many complaints about that little piece of paper that ComEd sends out about it. Yeah, people, it really, really ticks people off to be compared to their neighbors. I, I don't know, it's human nature, but here's the thing, you know what that is? That is an efficiency program. There have been multiple studies done across the country that have shown that these, these home energy reports that compare you to people with similar housing stock or in your area or whatever work. They motivate people to cut down their usage. People don't like seeing themselves compared in a negative light to others like, well, and it, it's been shown to work. So ComEd, I mentioned earlier that they're required to um, run these efficiency programs. They're required to encourage their customers to reduce their usage. Those home energy reports are one of the things that they use to meet those requirements. So the question about whether they're accurate we got a lot of questions about that. It's tricky. Um, we looked into it a while ago, and I don't remember. I'm being, I'm being filmed now, so I have to be careful. But I believe it was by zip code. And so we had problems. Uh, you might run into problems where you live in an area where there's different kinds of housing stock, because I think it's by zip code. And so if you live in a big house, and your neighbor just has a much tinier house, well then of course you're just gonna be using more. But it, so they're, they're, they're somewhat accurate, but not, I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't go nuts over their accuracy, but they're effective at encouraging efficiency. The letters that compare you to your neighbors um, I think that your neighbors are affected by temperature too, so that's not the issue. But the letter that says you're doing better than last month or last year, then that d those do factor in for differences in, in weather. Yes. Yes. There's a whole bunch of different ones they're, they're trying out. They're trying out, they're, they're trying to see which ones are the most effective. So the most common ones are the ones that are comparing you to your neighbors, but then there are others that compare you to yourself previous years. So the ComEd supply rate is fixed itself. However, that doesn't include the purchase energy ad adjustment. So that can add or subtract to the bill. Yeah. Great question. Well, the, you guys have been an, a wonderful crowd. I, I feel like we could have just kept on going if it wasn't dinner time. But um, I really appreciate I really appreciate your coming out and your excellent questions. That is a great question. Yes, how do I know I have a smart meter? You would have gotten a notice, and they notify you multiple times, but if you're like a lot of people who just throws that stuff away, um, you can tell also by looking at your bill, your meter number, it's really nice that they thought to do this, your meter number, if you have a smart meter, your meter number, not your account number, but the meter number will start with the number two. And so you'll see that in the, yeah, yeah, you can look, you got your bill right there. You can see meter number. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm glad it was helpful. Um, happy to come back out. And actually, we are coming back out in February. Um, we just sh set up a utility bill checkup. I think it's happening February 16th. Don't quote me on that. We will publicize it. The village will publicize it. And that is going to be a great event because we're going to bring a bunch of Cub staffers and you'll be invited to bring your bills to sit down with us one-on-one -on -one, and we can look at your bills and make sure that there's nothing funky going on. And make sure you're on the best plan. And that would be for your home phone, your gas, and your electric bills, a utility bill checkup. So keep your eyes open for that in mid-February sometime. Well done. Yeah. yeah. So, all right. Thank you, everybody. Yeah. Have a lovely evening. <laughs>